Good evening, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream. I'm going to do your January the 2nd spiritual principle a day in a meditation. The title of the meditation, Unity Keeps Us Coming Back. When we walk into our first meeting and see addicts coming together in unity, the spirit touches us even before the words get through. That comes from the Guiding Principles book, Tradition One, Spiritual Principles. That first meeting, some of us arrive beaten down asking for help. Others of us show up because we need that paper sign. Still others come to prove a point to someone else or to ourselves like maybe we don't need a program and showing up at a meeting will somehow prove that point. We enter not knowing what to expect and try to stay on the sidelines unnoticed. People are chatting, putting out literature, setting up the room, being together. Someone gives us a hug to be welcoming, not for any other reason, culture shock. Our first tradition tells us that personal recovery depends on NA unity. We may not fully grasp this concept at first, but even so, unity takes hold of us. Somehow, we sense that we might just, we just might rather belong here. We take up the suggestion we hear at every meeting. We keep coming back. Some of us return to hear more of what members shared or read. For others, the togetherness we witness gets us to that next meeting. We watch as members embrace and let go enough to accept the hugs we're offered. We sense that we are a part of something greater than ourselves and our addiction. We let go just a little. Despite our initial skepticism and discomfort, the spirit of unity encourages us to stay. Later, we attend our first NA convention where we experience the spirit on a much larger scale. We come together to celebrate recovery and unity springs from our shared commitment to living clean. Truly, we have found a new way to live. In unity, we reach out to newcomers and show them how we recover together. Today, I will celebrate the spirit of unity that keeps me coming back by offering my support to a newer member. Let's take a moment of silence followed by the Wii version of Serenity Prayer. Moment of silence now, please. Thank you. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Unity keeps us coming back. I like this. I like this quote here. When we walk into our first meeting and see addicts coming together in unity, the spirit touches us even before the words get through. Isn't that something? If we all go back to our very first meeting, we remember that we were broken. We remember that we were scared. We probably remember whether it was a open meeting or a closed meeting or in an institution. We also remember, I remember, the level of concern that I saw other addicts having for one another. And it struck me as interesting in a world where giving hugs was just something that family members did with each other. You hug your grandma, you hug your uncles, your aunts, right? It was something that hugging was not a part of society in that sense. I mean, if you were in another country like Italy or something, you might see hugs or something like that. But in our country, no, that was not something that I remember seeing in the 90s. It wasn't a part of my culture to go around hugging people and to see what appeared to me to be a bunch of people that had come from the same background of using to get, you know, chasing one more, showing affection, and there wasn't some undercut to it. There wasn't a motive. It, it wasn't like a man was trying to, you know, sleep with me. 
it, this was just a hug because I'm new and I'm the most important person at any meeting. It was definitely a culture shock. And it took me a long time before I could receive hugs. I mean, I, I would act like I was going to allow you to hug me, but just as you got really close to me, I would turn to, to my left and give you my right shoulder. I gave those partial hugs for a long time. I give less of them today. I mean, if I don't give a hug at all, it wouldn't be uncommon anymore because of COVID. But in general, I'm way more receptive to hugs than I ever was. And the, it was true. The spirit was already being conveyed to me, speaking to me before I heard anyone share their experience, strength, and hope. You know, I never forget my first convention and coming down the, the escalator at, at the center where the convention was being held and there being huggers at the bottom of that escalator intent on hugging every person that stepped off of that escalator. I was so annoyed. I was so annoyed. I was just so annoyed, like, leave me alone. I don't want to hug everyone at the bottom of the escalator, right? But it was amazing. Later, serving as a hugger at a convention, it was amazing later to see how many people that were coming off the escalator and had so much tension on their face and how they walked away from your hug with a smile. And a couple of people would just melt in your arms like that was all they wanted to do was get to the convention. And they had made it and landed in our receiving arms of welcome. Time brings on a change. And I can tell you that it was the unity that kept me coming back. Yeah, I was desperate. I was broken. I wanted to repair a lot of things. But for a long time, none of that took place. The only thing that really kept me coming back was that feeling of camaraderie and relationship, unity, to see people come together for a meeting, to see people that maybe didn't even have a high school diploma that would tell you that they could not read very well. To listen to them recite some of the longest readings at the beginning of the meeting and know that that just came from coming again and again and again. They kept coming back and they could hear it and they stored it in their memory like that. It was amazing to me. What's your story? That's Mighty Stream's story. What's your story of unity that kept you coming back? I want you to tell that to someone today. I don't care who it is. It could be your mom. It could be your dad. It could be one of your kids. It can be uh, your sponsor. It could be someone, a newcomer at the meeting. I don't care who it is. I want for you to go back to your beginning stages. I'm losing my voice, I'm sorry. But I want for you to go back to your beginning stages to where you are today. And I want you to think about the part that Unity played in you continuing to come back to the program. Now we all have those bugaboo stories where there was no Unity and there was stress and there was all this strife in business meetings or whatever. We all have those moments. I don't want you to hold on to those. I want you to hold on to the times where unity was the catalyst to you continuing to come back. And I want you to tell that five minute story to someone. Again, I believe that by hearing yourself talk about the gratitude for the unity, you are going to develop the unity even further, right? Our gratitude speaks when we care and when we share with others the in a way for the newcomer. 
our gratitude speaks when we care and when we share with others the in a way. I want for you guys to commit to me that you're going to leave this podcast with it in mind that this is a goal before you come back to the podcast for the third, that this is a goal of yours to share how unity served its purpose in you coming back, continuing to come back. Share that with someone. Five minutes. It's a challenge. I double dog dare you. And then tell me the response you got and then tell me also how it made you feel. Because I tell you, sometimes just being able to go back and tell those short little stories that I share with you guys, it builds me up on the inside. If you could see me sitting here at my table right now with my eyes closed as I talk into this device, it builds me up on the inside and it gives me the gratitude that I need to have to adjust my attitude so that I can truly reach my aptitude, right? In this thing that we call recovery. You have people that have academia, they have academic knowledge, but they cannot tell you anything about what we do. They cannot tell you the first thing about surrender. They don't know anything about recovery and they need a program. They just don't want what we have to offer, right? Some of us have PhDs in the school of hard knocks and we will not even open our mouths a little bit to share with someone else how grateful we are. We have to change that. We have to change that. And so today I'll charge you with that. My name is Mighty Stream. I've enjoyed talking to you. I hope that you will have a beautiful day on purpose.